Hello there and welcome to the series on hand calculations. Today we're going to be discussing uh, the electron percent depth dose curve or PDD. And really the electron PDD has the same definition as the photon PDD. So it's always normalized to D max and it just represents the dose distribution along the central axis with respect to depth. And it does have a few similar dependencies as well. It depends on the beam energy, the source to surface distance, and also the field size that you are measuring the PDD at. Some key parameters that define the PDD include the range, the R50, which is the range at which the dose drops to 50% of its maximum value, and also the surface dose. And another thing unique to electron PDDs is that they consist of X-ray contamination, which really shows up as a bremsstrahlung tail on the PDD. And it's really caused by interactions that the electrons have in the treatment head that produce bremsstrahlung radiation. And you get uh, a bremsstrahlung tail as a result. And we'll see a result of uh, some of those tails in the following images. And so here's an example plot of some electron PDDs for a few different energies. We have six different energies here. And I point out the Bremsstrahlung tail there at the end. And you can see that because of that X-ray contamination you get as a result of Bremsstrahlung production, uh, you actually get some dose that is deposited at depth. Um, and it is the result of those Bremsstrahlung photons. And you can see for increasing energy, you get a much more significant X-ray contribution at depth, you know, for, for the six MeV beam here, you're down towards 1%. And when you get up to 22 MeV, you're up towards seven, 8%. And so it is quite, uh, increases quite substantially with energy. I also want you to take note of the surface dose. You're, if you remember with photons, as our photon energy increased, as our beam energy increased, we got more of a skin sparing effect, but we actually see the opposite effect with electrons. And as your energy increases, as your electron beam energy increases, your skin dose actually increases as well. So that's something you need to consider uh, when you're treatment planning or if you're trying to minimize skin dose or really uh, for any reason, you just need to consider what your skin dose is going to be. A couple general rules with electron beams. Uh, one is that the range is roughly equal to the energy divided by two. So R stands for range here. And you just take your beam energy and MeV and divide it by two, and that should approximately give you the range. So if you look at this 6E beam here, this orange curve, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and you can see that the range is, you know, about 3 centimeters. So it's just a general rule. And it really comes from the fact that electrons lose about 2 MeV per centimeter in water or, you know, human tissues, roughly water equivalent. So that's where that rule comes from. Uh, here's another rule with D80, so where the percent depth dose drops to 80%, it's roughly equal to the energy divided by 3, and that is sometimes referred to as the therapeutic range. Another rule of thumb here is that the depth of maximum dose is often equal to the energy divided by 4. So in the case of, uh, let's look at the 12 MeV electron here. So 12 divided by 4 is going to be 3, and you can see that D max is about at 3 centimeters. So that's a, another useful rule to keep in the back of your pocket for, you know, board exams or just quick back of the envelope calculations. And that's going to be it for the video on electron PDDs. So thank you for watching.